Oh, it's like watching controlled pandemonium. <laughs> yeah, you bet. You know, there's a lot of mathematics that go into designing the courses. Well, I don't think the riders are doing complex calculations in their head while riding. No, that's not what I mean. Although riders do learn how to judge their speed as they ride into turns and make their jumps, but that becomes part of their muscle memory and experience. Hmm. So what did you mean then? Well, the speed you can go is pretty much determined by the tightness of the turn, and how high you can jump is determined by the shape of the ramp. Well, that makes sense. The tighter the turns, the more slow you have to go so you don't slide off the track into the corner. You got it. So what about the ramp? Well, how does that affect everything? Well, the angle of the takeoff, the height of the takeoff point, and the speed of the bike all affect how long the bike will stay in the air. That makes sense, but do you need to have a PhD to calculate the math? Mm, not at all. Mostly just comes down to some simple algebra. Mm. Here, I'll show you. Mm. Here's a model of the ramp. So the ramp's run has a width W, and the ramp's height is H, or the rise. Okay, so the bike launches from the ramp at coordinate zero H, right? Right, and at that point, the speed is given by S in feet per second. Okay, I get this, but the whole equation looks really daunting. It can at first glance, but we can think of it much more simply. All of the terms in the equation are constant, except for X, as the bike launches. So really, the equation is in the form Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, but I recognize that equation as a parabola, right? Exactly, and that's the path the bike's trajectory takes, is a parabola. See, I told you, it was just algebra. So I'm trying to understand how the designer or rider controls the shape of the bike's path. Okay, well, let's take a look at the original height, h. The higher the h value, the higher the starting point, and the larger the coefficient of the x term. On the other hand, the x squared term is becoming more negative, so it offsets the gains made by the other two terms. Okay, so that makes sense, because the higher you are, the longer gravity pulls on you, right? So if x gets bigger, x squared pulls you down faster. Right. Okay, so let me try one, okay? Whew. Shake it out, shake it out. Okay, if you increase the speed, which is s, mm -hmm. the only thing that should change is the coefficient of x squared. Exactly. So that makes sense, because the denominator gets bigger, which makes the coefficient smaller, and the x squared terms make less of an effect, am I right? It is. Now remember, the x squared term is negative, so it has less effect, and the bike goes higher. That makes sense, because if the bike is going faster, it should go higher. Yeah, it, it's a little daunting at first, but an equation is really just a shorthand way of telling a story. And the mathematical model should make sense when translated into the real world. Shall we get back to the real world now? It was very fun learning how to design a dirt bike track, but you can't sit in an easy chair and eat popcorn like you do when you're watching the race. You getting it? Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Wow.